up our gaunts. Um, you've got your stabby gaunt. Um, some people like to call them hormigaunts or something, but um, as far as I'm concerned, they're stabby gaunts. And then you've got your shooty gaunts or termagants. Um, and then you have your, well, I'll get to that later. Um, first of all, same basic thing, just one stabs and one shoots. Um, they are two separate options, though. They're not the same unit with different upgrades. Um, there are some key, dif key, key, key differences to know between the two. Stabbing aunts, no longer they no longer charge 12 inches. They got rid of that. Um, so they both charge just as far. Stabbing aunts have fleet. Shooting aunts do not. So on a 6, you could still effectively make a fake 12 inch charge. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, another thing, this is big. These stabby gaunts, the hormigaunts, have um, they have this rule. They are instinctive behavior feed. These are instinctive behavior um, lurk. So if these are out of synapse and you fail, um, they go towards the enemy. These ones just chill and cover. That's a really big difference. If you're going to take um, objectives with them or something like that, um, the last thing you want is for these to just go sit and cover when you need to get like another five inches forward to claim the objective or something. Um, they're both squad, uh, squad size 10 to 30. They both are pretty much the same stats aside from the attack. Um, these get plus one attack. Um, other than that, they're pretty similar. They all have move through cover. Um, these guys have these guys have bounding leap, um, which in the last codex was basically they assaulted 12 inches. Now it means for their run, they roll, I think it's 3d6 and choose the highest. It's either 2 or 3, whatever. Um, so they have a much higher chance of still getting that full 12 inches off the movement to assault. Um, or 18 inches, rather. Um, they can both take adrenal glands and tox or toxin sacs, although... The ones for the stabby gaunts cost two points, and these ones cost one point, because let's face it, these have twice as many attacks. Um, toxin sacks, it, it might really be worth it for one point. It might really be worth it um, so that you're wounding space marines on a four, um, wounding monstrous creatures on a four. It's, it's, it's really pretty good. A lot of people don't expect it. I'd probably put it on these guys, even though... They are more expensive for them. They have more attacks anyway, and they're way more likely to get into combat. Um, so on these, toxin sacks are awesome. If you do toxin sacks, um, I wouldn't bother with adrenal glands because these have an issue of five. You're already going before space marines, so and the strength won't matter. If you're going these guys, I would always go adrenal glands. Um, <clears throat> actually, I take that back. These are sometimes good with the adrenal glands. Um, I would always I would always consider it. Um, the glands are one of the units that I actually really like to get upgrades for. Um, adrenal glands, the big, big thing with adrenal glands are um, that you have plus one strength when you charge. That puts them up to four, which can glance rear armor of a lot of vehicles. Um, if you saw in one of our previous battle reports, uh, it was a three-way game between Necrons, um, myself with Imperial Guard, and Will with the, with the Tyranids. Um, I didn't realize he had adrenal glands, and he hit my line with about 20 of these things, and completely made worthless two of my layman Russes. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, adrenal glands might really be worth it, and toxin sacks are debatable. Um, now, with these, I mean, that's pretty much all you got for these. You can get up to 30 of them. Adrenal glands or toxin sacks are your only option, so they're pretty straight to the point you want to get an assault. With these guys here, they come with a flesh bore, which is basically an assault one bolter. Um, 12 inch range, kind of crappy. Um, you can certainly hurt a lot of things with it, you can kill a lot of things with it, but in a lot of cases, stabby gaunts are going to work better for you. Um, you can give them spine fists or spike rifles. No one cares about those. Don't even look at them. Um, you could also give them a Devourer. This is one of the upgrades that I, probably the only major upgrade I see them ever taken with. Um, this is a Gaunt with a Devourer. It's kind of hard to see because it's still white. Um, 
I would only recommend using these if you're putting 20 of them in a spore. The reason being is that a gaunt costs 5 points. A devourer costs 5 points. Um, honestly, I think it's overpriced. I think they should have been 3, maybe 4 points. But 5 is just ridiculous. Um, so, unless you're going to be um, putting them in a spore, I wouldn't even consider it. Um, a spore costs 40 points. That's as much as four of these gaunts. So, unless you think that you're going to lose less than four gaunts on the way from your deployment to the time you get in range and shoot with these, go ahead and take a spore, and you'll save yourself points and get more shots in the end. So, um, always, 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 if you're getting the devourers, put them in a spore. I know I just said it five times, but put them in a spore. Seriously. Um, three shots is eight at 18 inches. I think it's only strike three, though. So, um, a squad of 20 of these dropping in a spore, your opponent can't do anything about it, and you get 60 shots. You can really mess up some stuff with that. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not much else goes for the for the gaunts. If you take the shooty gaunts, the termagants, termagants, if you take them, there is a rule that for every troop squad of these you take, you may take one termagon as a troop choice. So you can effectively have three of these and three Turvagons as your troops. Um, I'll get into the Turvagons later, but Turvagons are amazing, um, especially as a troop choice. Goodbye.